Today, I want to talk about using SmartArt. We're currently in the Word application, but SmartArt applies to not just Word, but PowerPoint and Excel as well. And if you're looking to take a certification exam, you might have a question regarding SmartArt. And so while we're in Word, it applies to all of those programs. The reason that I want to talk about SmartArt today is that I've noticed my students struggling with simple concepts within SmartArt. And so today we're just going to quickly cover some of the basics of using SmartArt. The first place we want to go is go to the Insert tab on your ribbon. We're in the Illustrations group. We're going to click SmartArt. We're currently in the All section of the SmartArt dialog box. And as I scroll through this list, you can see it's pretty exhaustive. On the exam, you want to read through the question carefully, and you're going to look for a descriptor in the SmartArt. You might see something like list or cycle in the name of the smart art you're supposed to select and if you're able to click on that section it will limit the different types of smart art that you actually see on your screen and that could be helpful and could save you some time in addition to that as you're looking through this list if i hover over any of these smart art types notice that it tells me what kind of smart art i'm about to select so if you're not sure make sure you hover so that you select the correct smart art for this, we're just going to go ahead and use the basic block list and we'll click OK. And we can see here that it put SmartArt in my document. When it input the SmartArt, one of the things it did was it had the text pane open. And I can simply open and close that by using this arrow here on the left hand side of the SmartArt. There are two ways to input text in your SmartArt. I tend to want to use this text pane to put my information in, but you can click within these shapes to add your text. We have the Peter Pan ebook open. We've used this document for some other videos. So I'm going to go ahead and just populate some of the characters from Peter Pan. I've gone ahead and I've typed in four different characters within this story. Notice here that I have a fifth bullet and I don't want to add any more characters. If I put my cursor within that bullet and hit the backspace key on my keyboard, notice that that bullet disappears. If I wanted to add a bullet, I could hit enter on the last bullet to add another bullet. Or because we have our SmartArt selected and we're actually in it, we have the SmartArt Tools Design tab. If you go to the Create Graphic group, you can click on Add Bullet. Now, something to note is actually when I click that, notice that it's indented. You can promote and demote bullets in this same section. And while we're here, let's talk about some of the other features within this group. We can change our right to left. Notice that it just flips the way that displayed. And let's say right here, I wanted Captain Hook to be moved up underneath Peter Pan. If I put my cursor within that bullet in the create graphic section, if I click move up, notice it moves that bullet up and I can move it down as well. Let's go ahead and delete these bullets that I no longer need. Let's go ahead and talk about one of the things that I've noticed that my students have struggled with when working with SmartArt. By default, when you insert SmartArt, your cursor is usually in that first bullet. And if you look very carefully at my SmartArt, you can see that the shape with Peter Pan is selected. And one of the tasks that they could be asked to do is to change the size of the SmartArt. And what they don't realize is that they have an individual element selected within the SmartArt. And so when they go to change the height to three, something like what happened on my screen happens to them and they're confused. They don't know what's going on. I'm going to go ahead and hit Control Z on my keyboard to undo what I've done. They don't realize that that one shape is selected within the SmartArt. And what I need to do is click within the white section of the SmartArt to have the whole SmartArt selected. And now watch what happens when I change this width to eight. Notice that it affects the entire smart art, not just an individual element. So on the exam, if you're working with this and something doesn't look right, you might just have your cursor in a specific spot and you need to kind of click outside of that spot. While we're on the smart art tools format tab, let's talk about the arrange group. On the exam, I could easily see you being asked to place the smart art in a specific place. You can place the smart art within different sections. And as I hover over these, we can see the SmartArt being placed within different parts of our document. Something else to notice is the text wrap settings. And very similar to using pictures, we could do things like square or top and bottom. Let's go ahead and select that. And then let's go ahead and move this 
and notice that the text surrounds it top and bottom. And then just so you can really see it, let me go ahead and put behind text so that you can see the wrap settings with that effect. I'll do control Z on my keyboard again, just to undo what I've done. And let's talk about one other thing. Let's go back to the smart art tools design tab. And some of the things that I could see you being asked to do on the exam is change either the colors. This list is a list that you can scroll through. One of the things that I've seen students struggle with is maybe they're down here on accent four and they don't realize that in order to find the colorful section, they need to scroll up. So note that this does scroll up and down this list. The other thing that you could be asked is the smart art styles, this section right here. And if I click the more drop down, they have the best for this document, but they also have some 3D styles. I know I mentioned this earlier on something else, but if you're not sure what you're about to select, make sure you hover so that you select the correct style for your smart art. Overall, working with smart art is not difficult, but I encourage you to practice creating different types of smart art so that on the exam, if you have an issue like what my students have noticed on their practice, where you have issues resizing the smart art, you don't get upset on the exam. You just undo what you've done and then you can fix it and move on to a different part of the exam.